Hello one, hello all, welcome to this. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking this is the last hurrah here for Halloween Kills content. But the, the word was released by David Allen Greer, David Gordon Green, saying that there is a alternate ending that will be released on the Blu-ray, which leads me excited because the things that I saw and the, the things that were released on October 15th, 17th, 18th, whatever the hell the date was, um, they don't match. And a lot of people are bothered by the, the cliffhanger nature that was the end of Halloween Kills. And I'm here to tell you that, hold on. Um, I certainly have graded a different version of the movie much higher than what, what we got. And something that I think they've been doing quite well as, as far back as 2018 is kind of visually leaving you with, with clues and, and, and things to cling to. The way they closed Halloween 2018 with the granddaughter holding that knife, that, that shot felt so, so much more important than, than just a girl holding a knife. They, they held on that shot. And if you go back and watch Halloween Kills, it almost seems like they had that shot, but cut it. Because when we first go back to the truckload of Strodes, we open with like what seems like a hard cut, where that would have been the perfect place to open with the, the very same shot of granddaughter Strode holding that knife. And I say that because reasons, but wouldn't it have been fantastic if there was a bit more to the ending than just what we got? Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers again, spoilers a thousand times over. Knowing how much this, this already two film bridge has been, you know, looking back and forth and kind of tipping the cap to, albeit uh, the history of the franchise, as well as the, the, the little mini series we have going on now, how much, how much cooler would it have been if Laurie Strode is partially to blame for what happens at the end of Halloween Kills to Karen. Uh, let's just say, what if, what if Laurie Strode calls her daughter Karen and that's why Karen is up in Michael's bedroom because it really doesn't make sense the way they lead it in Halloween Kills. Like, oh, okay, so she, she finished with Michael but then ran up to his bedroom um, what if, what if instead of that, they, they had Laurie Strode calling Karen and having some sort of conversation about how it's all really over, it's over, I'm standing right here in his bedroom, don't worry about it, we finally did it. And then you have the, the surprise, oh shit, Michael saying, what, what are you doing in my bedroom? This is where I keep my sock ghosts. Uh, and then he just obliterates Karen. But the phone, the phone is still on so that Lori can hear all of it. And she's listening to the whole thing, listening to the whole thing. Just, yep, uh, hang on, my, my daughter's getting murdered, hold on. And then you have Michael pick up the phone in an homage to part one, where Lori then picks up the phone and says, Michael, I'm coming to get you. And that is your, your lead in to the end of Halloween Kills. I mean, they, they showed us the shot in the trailers of her walking down the hall, highlighting the knife, much like they've done in these past two movies. What if, what if 
That were your original Halloween Kills ending. How would you feel about it? I think that would be pretty neat, but that's just me. Comment down below, let me know what you think of this what if ending. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Although, if you're coming for Halloween content, I, I, think, I think we're pretty bare for, for the next little bit. Um, and uh, let, let me know what you think. It's a thumbs if you like it. And uh, yeah, yeah, happy, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Remember that holiday? I, I don't either. Well, anywho, until next time, America, I've been CP and you haven't.